Hey guys, uh, I'm back with my Game Boy Zero build here. I wanted to show off. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned I'd want to build. I wanted to build a handheld with the Game Boy case and a Raspberry Pi Zero this time around. Uh, and that's that's what I've done here. I'm just going to turn it on and you can check it out. It uses the original switch, which is now black because this is actually a, a third-party case. It's not the original case. I couldn't see destroying my old Game Boy since it works fine. Uh, I will say that the, the Raspberry Pi Zero is a little slower to boot, but that's you know to be expected. It's not as fast as the Raspberry Pi Three. And this is a custom splash screen I used for Emulation Station. It was really easy to set up. I just I made this simple animation in uh, After Effects and then just saved it as an MP4 and installed it. Okay, now we're loaded up here. The screen is a 320 by 240 uh, LCD screen, which was actually meant for a backup camera in a car. Uh, and it's not the best quality, I, I will say, but it was super inexpensive. It was like 18 bucks, and it was supposed to run off 12 volts. I made it run off of 5 with a simple modification, um, but it, it does the trick. And I, I can definitely see like the next build using a much more higher quality screen. Uh, maybe a VGA screen of some kind. Alright, so I'm going to try a game out here. Let's do Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. So I have, let's see here, I'll show some things off. So the, there's a mono speaker, obviously, from the original uh, Game Boy. Uh, it's still just mono, I didn't add another speaker or anything like that. Uh, it uses a potentiometer to change the volume, which all works. Um, let's see, uh, this is obviously a, a much bigger screen than the original. And this emulator actually has the ability to change the colors of the screen, which is kind of cool. That's why it's not like that, that green monochromatic. You can make it that for the Game Boy uh, emulator, but I, I like this uh, colorization a little bit better. A little bit easier on the eyes. So there's two extra buttons here. You probably see face buttons. And uh, under the hood is this PCB that sits under here and it's got two extra buttons. Uh, it's an all-in-one board I purchased off of pseudomod.com from a guy named Helder, and he makes these awesome all-in-one uh, PCB boards for the, the Game Boy Zero builds, and it includes uh, L1, L2, R1, R2 buttons, uh, and these additional buttons here, and it also includes um, like the audio out and the potentiometer out and stuff like that, so it, it's a really cool cool thing. I, I'd suggest you check it out on pseudomod.com and uh, if you're interested in building something like this. Uh, so, but anyway, you can see this, this runs just like it would on the original Game Boy, but better. You know, and uh, it's got these... The build has these extra buttons in the back for, let's say, uh, Game Boy Advanced or other consoles that use those, those buttons. They're simple tech switches. They're not the best. You see? I mean, they're not the best, but... They work, they're functional, but not many handhelds have that. But it's just nice to have them there if I if they do have it. I can see using like real buttons like these here in a future build if I were to do this again. Um, I should just go over the hardware real quick. So it's running off of a 2500 milliamp battery uh, from Adafruit, which is right here. And that just sits inside the, the battery compartment, but there are other hidden gems under here. This is the screen uh, brightness control, uh, and this is an extra USB port. You can see the speaker down there, you can see the actual all-in-one board. I want to be careful here with this battery. It'd rather not explode on me. So that gets all tucked away behind the battery door, like the original Game Boy. 
the cartridge slot here I had plans to use for um, like the SD card would sit in there and I had this idea from again pseudomod a guy named Wormy his original build had this adapter one of these SD card adapters full-size adapters that would convert the uh, smaller one to full size and you know, just solder into the pins appropriately and you tie into the Raspberry Pi on the back. Unfortunately, this didn't work for me, uh, probably because of some kind of noise. And I even tried the, the trick where you use a capacitor to um, cut out the noise uh, from from the data, but it still did not work. And I, it was, I was booting up to basically a, an error screen saying it couldn't find the OS. Uh, and I, I really didn't want to keep doing that to my card, my SD card, uh, since I put all this work into getting it working properly for this, this build. So I just pulled it, and that's why you see a space here uh, where I actually had the idea of having the SD card. It did work once or twice, and that's why I went ahead and actually cut into the case. Uh, but when I did eventually put everything into the case, it stopped working after a while. So um, it's not like I cut first and then thought about it later. It just stopped working, so I pulled it from the build for the time being. Um, but yeah, so it's it's got, on this side, uh, let's see, it's got a micro HDMI port. If I wanted to go out to a TV, it's got a micro USB port for charging. And you can see here there's LEDs that are inset. Uh, and these these pigtail off of the actual Adafruit Paraboost 10,000, or 1,000 rather, 1,000C. And that is what is used to power the actual Game Boy Zero. It takes the 3.7 volt battery uh, and makes it 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi, which is what it requires. And it has these four LEDs of surface matted on the power boost itself, uh, but I wanted them exposed outside of the case so I can see what's going on. And uh, the blue means it's powered on. Uh, this is a red one. If the battery is dying, runs low, it'll blink and eventually become solid, saying, hey, turn me off, charge me. Uh, this is yellow for letting you know that it's being plugged in and charged. And then this is green to let you know that the, the charge is done. Really simple. Uh, it was kind of difficult to... It, it's simple in, in, in look, but it was difficult to actually solder to the points on the PCB uh, because the surface-mounted LEDs are so teeny tiny. But it worked out, luckily, on the first try. And uh, it worked nicely. But yeah, that, that's about it. Um, runs games pretty well. For, for what they are, you know, it's not going to run PlayStation games or N64 games, anything like that. But uh, for for Game Boy games, Super Nintendo games, Nintendo games, etc., uh, it runs really well. And you can see here the different consoles I have that, that run. There's Game Boy Advanced, Game Boy Color, uh, Mega Drive, which is Genesis, I have to adjust that. But uh, yeah, all these different consoles and handhelds work well. And even Doom on the 32X surprisingly works well. I have run that last night. I was surprised to see it running well. Um, I might even try to put the the ports on here, like the actual PC ports for Doom. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool. Kind of hard to play with a directional pad uh, with Doom, but still, it's it's kind of cool. It works. It's functional. Hey, you can see it's <laughs> it's Doom. Look at that. Ink enough doom, right? And that's about it. Um, I wanted to put a graceful shutdown switch when I pulled this to shut it down gracefully and not just shut the power off. Uh, but I'm still struggling with that circuit. Uh, there's a do-it-yourself circuit diagram I'm following, and I'm just doing something wrong and not understanding the diagram properly. So uh, I just shut it down through the the menus here, which works fine for me for the time being. But that is my Game Boy Zero build. You know, let me know what you guys think, or if you guys have uh, built one of these before, or whatever. You know, let me know what you think, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.